But God being the God of impossibility, impo- impossibilities means that he can cause to exist what is unable to exist. Like, by his very words, the entire world was created. <laughs> he can cause anything to exist. That car that you're wanting, that you want it to be a particular model, that's a particular color, he is well and able to give you that above your very expectations. Like, he can give you that and way much more. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Honey and Milk podcast. If you're new here, welcome. Feel free to look around. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Um, If you're returning, so nice to have you back. Hope you had a wonderful week. And I hope life has been good to you so far. And um, yeah, so let's get right into it, okay? Today we'll be talking about the God of impossibilities or... What I would also like to describe as possible impossibilities. And I want to kind of break it down like there was an episode I had that was a story, a lesson, and a message. So I'm also going to be kind of like heading, like walking, working with my laptop this time. So if you see me move around a little bit, it's just because I have some notes in my laptop and I also like to, would like to look at it as well. So I'll start with a story, and this is a personal story. I was born into a Christian home, one of the greatest testimonies of my life, to be honest. And I was baptized at my church home, that's my home church, actually, um, Ekwa Wusito Abuja. When I was a teen, I remember, like, I had just come out of of secondary school, that's high school, and I was about to head off into university, so in between that, that was around 20, to 2012, that's 2012, and it was around, um, so I got baptized then, it was uh, it was nice, because um, my church also had to take me through this discipleship training and to further understand what baptism was. Um, I would say, like, even though I went through that training, I didn't really fully understand what, what the water baptism meant either ways. It was now around May 2021, like nine years after, that um, I was getting to know the Lord more, getting to try and understand the Bible and certain things in the Bible. And that's when I would say I understood what water baptism meant and what it was. And then after that, I was very sad because I felt like yes i did get baptized but i did not get baptized with the understanding and with the enthusiasm (laughs) that i wanted to have and i was i was just praying to god i was like god please (laughs) i want to get baptized again but then i remember that day it was so crazy because as i was saying that i was just like yeah, I want to be baptized again, but I don't want to be baptized in any place. I want to be baptized where Jesus was baptized, you know, River Jordan in Israel. And I remember just making the request and I was like, yeah, this is sort of impossible right now. Maybe I'll wait until I get money and older and working, like maybe my 40s, 50s, and then take a trip to Israel. So it just felt very, very impossible. And I remember the time that I made that request, it was kind of like an, um, just like an off the charts request, just like, oh yeah, I want to be baptized again. Um, but because I've been baptized before, yeah, I could take my time with this second baptism and I would like it to be grand this time. (laughs) It was just, I think it was just a dream or a wish I had in my heart and I I just said it, like I just said it because I was like, okay, if I'm going to be baptized again, might as well like do it where Jesus did it. It It was just a desire in my heart. And I remember praying that and I thought it would be like years after that it will come to pass. Um, then fast forward to, um, 2023. 
and my dad now wanted us to have our first family trip like our first um, we've had family trips before but because of maybe my brother is not around at the time or i'm not around or my sister is not around or somebody's not around due to school or something so the recent family trips that they have had would always have one person left out but last year my dad decided that he wanted everybody to go it was a must <laughs> everybody would go on the family trip and he also decided that he wanted it to be an international family trip and out of all the places he chose he chose israel <laughs> it was so crazy to me so back again to 20, 2021 when i asked god for this grand what was to me this grand wish i number one did not even know how like i didn't know whether that place was open to the public i did not know what i did not know anything I, I just said it because I was like, ooh, fancy, you know, I, I just want it. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was a thing. I did not know whether it was possible. I didn't even know if the river was still working. I didn't know if it was. I did not know. I just said it. And then now two years after, around April 2023, so we went around Easter and the whole family went. And during the trip there, I sort of never really thought about it it's not like as we were going i was like oh this is the perfect time for me to go and check if they do baptism <laughs> i didn't do that i just sort of was enjoying my trip and then one of the days so we're also having like mini tours in between and um, going around israel checking things out so one of the days um they said okay we're heading off to the river jordan and i was like oh my god do they do baptism there? <laughs> that was when it like started to click. And that day I did not come out with anything. I did not come out with a change of clothes. I did not come out with anything. So if I was going to be baptized, I was just going to be wet throughout that whole day. It was not planned. It was just like as we were on the bus. They were like, okay, this is one of the stops. And I was like, oh my God, do they do baptisms there? I really like to be baptized there. Da, 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 da. And he was like, yes and no. So apparently there were there are two spots. In the river jordan i'm not sure there are two yeah there are two spots one of the spots is said to be the place that jesus was baptized um but it's quite muddy now and they don't recommend people you know dipping themselves into it there are some people that still get baptized there but it is not like recommended that one is like you do it at, do it at your own risk but then there's another place along the course of river jordan that is now like clear waters and there is actually a site there that people can go to um they have the whole package you can get like a dress to change into that you get to keep um you can have like a, a nice little certificate saying that oh i was baptized at this, at this place so the first place that we went to was the muddy place so when i when i went there i was like okay um i might not get the chance because it was very very spontaneous I might not get the chance to be baptized in the other place. So I said, okay, let me just take some water from this place. <laughs> so like I had like a water bottle and I went to go fetch some water for the place. And I was like, okay, like my little desire has been met. And then we get to the second place. And um, I remember the reason why I wasn't sure if it was going to happen was because I think I asked my dad um, if we had the time to do it and he hadn't given me an answer yet i don't think he gave me an answer yet i think he still needed time to contemplate and didn't know how the day was going to go so everything and then we get to the place and then not only was i now the person asking but like my sister was also asking so that was really really nice <laughs> That was really nice. And my sister was asking as well, like, oh, yeah, I would like to be baptized as well. This, 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 that. And um, he said yes. And so we ended up buying, like, the little baptism kit with the dress and everything. And uh, so we went to go change. And, um, yeah, we proceeded to go down. And it was such a beautiful moment. I would see if I can add the picture to the video. It was such a beautiful moment. It was really, really such a beautiful... 
<laughs> it was such a beautiful moment. Um, there were other groups there as well. When we came, there was a group there. They were singing, they were worshiping, and it was such an amazing time. Like I, I could not have imagined it in a million years, because not only did I myself get baptized, but I, my sister, got to be the one to baptize me, and I also baptized her. So that day was like beyond my imagination. It was beyond everything I could have hoped for. Like my wish was just to be baptized. Like if I had gone there and just dipped myself and gone out, I think I would have been satisfied. But now I get to have my loved one. I get to have my sister be the one to baptize me. And I also get to baptize her. And for my mom, my mom was like, my mom was just happy and like my dad was there and it was it was really beautiful so why am i saying this story what is the lesson of the story i'm not just here to just say the story the lesson would be that um those impossible things that you have asked god for those things that you have sort of thrown into the wind that is that to you is impossible. Um, I want you to know that God is very much capable of doing those impossible things. Um, Luke 1 verse 37, the Amplifier says that, for with God nothing is ever, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. So nothing today, nothing in the future shall ever be impossible with God. And one of the meanings of impossible is it is unable to exist like it 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 has no cause to exist but god being the god of impossibility impossibilities means that he can cause to exist what is unable to exist like by his very words the entire world was created (laughs) he can cause anything to exist that car that you're wanting that you want it to be a particular model that's a particular color he is well and able to give you that above your very expectations. Like, he can give you that and way much more. He shows up as Elohim of Genesis, of Genesis that brought about the heavens and the earth. He brought the heavens and the earth out of darkness, out of water. There was nothing in the world. And he spoke it to being. So when you say something is impossible, it is because it, it's unable to exist. But when you serve a God that can make all things come into existence for his good pleasure, then just know that all things are possible, God. He is literally the God of impossibilities. And a message I would also a message I would also like to say concerning this story would be that <sighs> would be to let God out of the box. So there's this it's it's also kind of well i call it normal but it it is to be expected because we are in a very limited space so we tend to interact with things with our with what we understand and how we understand it to be and how we want it to be and i just want to say that god is not limited to the human to to our humanity He's not limited to the box that we keep him in. He's not limited to the things that um, we can imagine, you know. There's a verse that says that he's able to do above and um, above and beyond what we can ever think or imagine. So even your imaginations that you're like, oh my God, this is wild. This is impossible. Am I crazy for dreaming this? And God is very much able to break out of that box that you even put yourself into so my message would be to expand your horizon of god don't use your situation as the lenses that you see god through but rather use god as the lenses through which you see your situations you know those impossible dreams those impossible requests that you have those I don't know, those desires that you have flung into the air and you're like, okay, one day I'll get to it. Um, Hand them over to God and leave them with him. Leave it with him. Hand it over to the God of impossibilities. 
let him refine your desires because like i said in the previous um episodes like when you delight in the lord he will bring your desires to pass so to pass means to bring into existence so when you let him refine you when you let him refine your desires when you let yourself delight in him when um you allow him to be your standpoint you allow him to be god you know get let go and let god actually take your hands off the reins tell him your desires but also realize that he is the one that is able to bring them to pass for your good pleasure for your um for for you for your goodness you know like this uh, this verse behind me jeremiah 29:11 says behold i have my thoughts towards you are good um hopefully i'll get to also speak about that one day about how God is so good that his thoughts are good. <laughs> his thoughts are good. And yeah, so God is not scared of your dreams. God is not scared of your imaginations. He's not scared of how grand you can imagine things to be or, or how ambitious you are. He's not scared of it. He owns the whole universe. There's nothing you can imagine that I would have ever taken by surprise but there is a place of our desires coming out of his desires and out of his will you know hand over your impossibilities whether it is your dreams requests or situations in fact it could not also like it's not only about dreams and imaginations but it's also situations you could be in a situation where it looks like damn <laughs> that's just the best way to describe it there's some situations that you just sit in and you're like oh wow <sighs> yeah and those situations those are the times more than ever that you need to hand it over to him you have to trust god to let it be done let it be done for your good you have to trust that he knows what's best you know and to also know that he actually wants to hear from you um sometimes we shy away from telling god our desires because of this fake humility i would call it where you're like oh god i don't want anything you know no don't do that he's your father he also wants to hear from you you are also allowed to dream with him and dream in him you know and he loves you he wants to hear your dreams your aspirations and you have to trust him enough to take those things and you know refine them for you and bring it to pass according to his will and hopefully this i would sort of go on a tangent here but i'm not also going to discuss about it in this episode and it's about where um we portray god taking things from us in order to give us better things so um i'm talking about this scenario where we're like yeah when god tells you to hand over some things because he has something better for you and i was just thinking through that i was like that is that sounds like god being portrayed as a very sadistic god like why does he have to take something from you in order to give you something better and sometimes it's like oh because i don't I, god wants to test you to see if you have an idol in your heart da, 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 to see if you love him yeah to see if you love him more than the, you love the gift more than the giver and i'm like but that's that's very weird that's portraying god to be a very weird god like it, it's low-key sadistic because why and then sometimes it also portrays that every time god asks you to give something is because he has something for you something better for you and so you give it and you wait and you're like where's my better and sometimes there is no better sometimes he just wants you to give it and um it led me down a path of thinking and meditating over that and asking god like okay what is that all about and one thing he spoke to me about that was that um, most times whenever he wants us to give something up, it's because we tend to be very temporal. 
but we're created for eternal like eternity so some of the things that some of the things that he takes away from us and is like oh they are idols in our hearts and they're idols that we are looking up to it's not idols for him it's idols for us like these sort of things tend to distract us and lead us down to a path of thinking earthly that's thinking temporarily but he's thinking eternally he's looking out for our eternity and if he knows that our hearts and our minds are focused on the eternal things he is more than willing and more than glad to let us have the temporal things so that was like a thought that went through my mind as i was also like thinking about the god of impossibilities and the good things he has for us he is not a sadistic god he is not like trying to cause pain and telling us like oh you have to give me in order for me to know your love no he's not like doing that for us he is a good god because that doesn't marinate his goodness that doesn't marinate his it doesn't make sense that's what i'm trying to say and um like i said i will find another episode to talk about this this was like a whole tangent so pardon me about that but i just want to pray for us today and i pray that (sighs) holy spirit help me okay i pray over us and i want to pray that first firstly that we delight in god i pray that our hearts are satisfied with the eternal one before any other thing i pray that our hearts are safe and comfortable with him to share the things that are on our hearts to share the dreams and the desires that we have I pray that we are patient and I pray that we trust and I pray that we have faith in God to an extent that we will be able to realize that the things that we have handed over to him, he will bring to pass in his own time, in his good will and for your own good as well. I pray over you today that the things that you have believed for him, like you have believed for and you have handed over to God, I pray that he expedites it for you. And I pray that when it comes to pass, that it will be way above all that you could have ever thought, way above all that you could have ever imagined. I pray that you take God out of your box, and I pray that God himself shows up as the God out of the box for you. I pray over every situation that you have. I pray over... Um, every desire that you have that it be refined in the fire of the almighty i pray for you i pray for your loved ones i pray that that you will encounter the god of impossibilities the god of love the god of good you know and i just pray that you have an awesome day and an awesome week ahead as well so in jesus name we've prayed amen all right then don't forget to subscribe leave a like you can find me on instagram at honey and milk podcast um i release podcasts the uh, podcast episodes every two weeks so on fridays at 12 every two weeks so see you in the next two weeks don't forget you can also write me an email at hi dot b at honey and milk dot org and I just want to say thank you to for joining in and also thank you to the Holy Spirit because without him, none of this would be possible. And I love you guys with the love of Christ. Take care.